So this is a patient that had had a previous retinal detachment um, that ended up needing a superior retinectomy because of subretinal oil and PVR. So first thing uh, in this patient, I want to make sure there's no membranes. So I go ahead and put in ICG. I don't see any membranes, but there is this tiny tear just uh, in outside of the superior temporal arcade. I diathermize that, and I think, okay, if I can just get this patient flat, and he had a previous large buckle inferiorly, uh, I should be able to, to laser him up and be fine. But unfortunately, I'm finding my laser just doesn't take when I go to air, and that's because I still have subretinal fluid, and I have this early PVR that is just unpeelable. So under air, I decide to go ahead and go for a retinectomy. Now, Caution with doing retinectomy under air, there's a couple of caveats uh, or concerns. First of all, make sure you diathermize vessels very carefully because bleeding, especially early on in the retinectomy while the retina is still pulled up, can result in subretinal hemorrhage that can go under the macula and limit your patient's vision. Here you can actually see that tension being relieved as we're retinectomizing. When I flip my cutter over and do the opposite side here, um, I do get some hemorrhage, but fortunately it's towards the end of my retinectomy and I'm able to elevate my pressure, diathermize that and get it under control and it's very limited. Now I normally will take out anterior retina, but in this case the retina laid flat on the buckle and there was plenty of it, so I just laser it confluently. I also advocate for at least a six o'clock hour retinectomy if you're going to do a retinectomy. But remember, this patient had a superior retinectomy for about six o'clock hours. So even though this inferior retinectomy is only about four o'clock hours, it did the job. Uh, and I limited it because it was just what was needed. And I put this patient under oil, and this patient does well enough.